Well, and I'll say this too, you know, a lot of what we do is, you know, we're creating a community. And, you know, these guys are winners. And I, and I always like to work with winners. And you'll see through this presentation, you know, that's what a lot of this company is about, is, is, is all of us elevating together, working together, collaborating together. So thanks for collaborating with us, guys. Thank you, Ryan. Absolutely. Yeah. Appreciate you. Thank you, Mark. All right. Well, <laughs> all right. Let's get to cracking. Yeah, grab your water. Thank you. So I always like to set the t tone. Thanks, everybody, for coming, by the way. Let me just see a quick show of hands. How many people in here are already with EXP? Just so I can kind of see. Okay. So good group. We've got about two-thirds of the audience already with us. Um, the rest of you are here to look at what? Real estate opportunity. Right, John michelle You're looking here. You came, came here to look at a real estate opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> just came for the sandwich. <laughs> so I always say, think of it this way, though, right? I mean, if I just said, hey, we're just a great brokerage with a new coat of paint on it, but it's the same engine under the hood, you know, that's a lateral move. That's not exciting, right? People don't get excited about just switching to switch for some, for switching sake. So what I say is take the word real estate out and let's think of this as more of an investment opportunity, okay? So when you look at investment opportunity, and I'm gonna keep keep uh, using Jean-Michel as my, uh, my, my, my foil here, um, What's the first question you ask when someone asks you to invest with them? What, what do you look for? Or do you ask two questions? What are the two questions you would ask? Time and return. How much and how much are you gonna give me back? 100%, right? So think about this when you're looking at the EXP opportunities. I'm gonna say, if you invest your business, if you invest your career into the EXP opportunity, the return is gonna be exponentially greater than in any other brokerage out there. Okay, that's my promise. That's the theory I'm gonna put out there and then we'll spend the next 30 minutes, maybe 45, proving that, okay? So think about that. Now let's talk about income for a little bit because I think income is very important. We all wanna make money, but uh, income doesn't always come in the same shapes and sizes, does it? Right, somebody give me a low form of income real quick. Like baseline, like what's the most basic form of income you can get? Trend. Hourly, I think I heard hourly, right? So you work an hour, you get paid an hour, right? Uh, what's the next one up? Someone said it. You work a year, salary, right? Yep, you get a salary. Uh, there's other forms, right? I mean, still, these are all kind of basic forms, right? You got uh, a contract work, right? If you build a deck, you get paid for the deck. Uh, I'm gonna even put commissions in here, okay? You, uh, you, you get the sale, you get the commission, okay? But these all have something in common, right? And I'm gonna call these transactional, right? So these are called transactional incomes. What do these incomes all have in common? Trading time for money. Sure, uh, absolutely. You're trading time for money, or trading expertise for money, or trading knowledge for money. But actually, I should actually ask it this way: Who do they all have in common? You. Exactly. Right. So, in other words, if I take you out of the equation, what happens to the income? It's not. It stops coming in. Right. Okay. So, so, so there are other forms of income, however. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of, you know, let's let's think high level. What's a high level form of income you can get? Passive. 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 That's a great one, right? Passive also comes in a lot of shapes and sizes, right? They're not all the same. Some are good, some aren't. So you know what you're looking at. Uh, what's another one? How about equity? Right? You know, uh, stocks, bonds, dividends, right? Owning shares of something. Uh, you know, business interest is another good one, right? Owning a percentage of a company. So there's some really good ones. Are you guys all familiar with the Robert, Robert Kiyosaki cash quadrants? Yes. Okay, um, so let's just go through them real quick. Uh, by the way, I had a chance to have uh, drinks with Robert the other day and I was telling him I use his quadrants in every single presentation and he was not impressed. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I told him about passive income, you know, he said he goes, massive income, it's called massive income. <laughs> Anyways, I'm, looking, I'm actually gonna try and meet with him here in a couple weeks and, and sit down and show him some of this. But uh, if you guys are familiar, I'll go through it real quick. You got your job in this corner, in this quadrant. You got self-employed here. You got business owner and you got investor. All right, so what's a job, right? Job stands for what? Just over, broke. Just over broke, right? So you're basically one of these. You're a transactional type person, hourly salary, et cetera. Uh, you, you have a boss, you have employees, there's a corporate structure above you usually, ownership above you. Uh, what does this stand for, self-employed? Okay, so self-employed means what? You, you own your own job. Right? I think we just would set, was anybody with me in Oregon when Brandon Dawson went through some of this stuff? Allie was. <laughs> Allie was. <laughs> Allie and I are traveling buddies. Um, so Allie, what did he say? There's something like 
35 million small businesses out there. 31 and a half million small businesses, and of those 31 and a half, about 25 million of them have one, one employee. One employee. Which is you. Two. Yeah. So out of the 35 million, and that even includes business owners, so you almost take in these, these chunks right here, right? But here's the cool thing. The, on this side of the equation, you have 80% of the population. 80% of the population either has a job or owns their own job, self-employed. But the 80% of the wealth is over here, business owner, investor. Does anybody know what separates a self-employed person from a business owner? Self-employed from a business yeah. owner. Or in, I mean, in like, yeah, or something they do differently. Like, give me an example. Like, what's the difference? The in business essence, owner actually is able to probably leave the business. Maybe? I okay, I mean, possibly, but the, the, the answer I'm looking for is nothing. Okay, they're the same, right? A business owner is a self employed. At some point, they were self employed or they're self employed. Self employed is also a business owner, right? It's what they do that separates them. So the things they do are the things they employ or deploy, right? So what does a business owner deploy or employ? The self employed does people, right? They have people, they've got a team. Right? They know how to multiply people. They've got people coming into their organization. They're able to grow a team. And the other thing they deploy is systems. Okay, EXP is my system. It's not my brokerage. It's my, it's my wealth creation system. This, this, this system, I just did the math, and I'm not here to brag, and John Lincoln can tell you when I first did my first lunch and learn, I used to put my net worth in the slide deck. And I even padded it a little, but I used to say it was like, I'm 2.5 million or something, right? So my wife and I, and that, that was not even what, 2016 we did this? I mean, my first in earnest lunch and learn probably four or five years ago. So I just did the math uh, yesterday, okay? So that is our current net worth. And it's all thanks to this, okay? 100, 100 million percent thanks to this. Okay, I'm, I was a good real estate agent, but I'm not that good. Right, I grew up in Chicago. I was a busboy. I was a caddy. I was a waiter. I was a ditch digger. Um, after about 27 winters, I got sick of the cold weather. Got sick of the traffic. I got sick of not meeting a beautiful woman like my wife Christy, who I met out here. Uh, so I was just like, I'm out of here. I left Chicago. Threw all my clothes in the garbage bag. Um, you know, literally collecting unemployment. Had just gotten fired from some crummy sales job, and uh, I came out here. I was living on my buddy's couch. Uh, and the first thing I said, I took my last $400 unemployment check and I went and got my real estate license over at uh, Arizona School of Real Estate and Business. And while I was in school, I met two very important people. First one was Christy, my wife, who also helped start EXP with us and has been around since the beginning. And also Glenn Sanford. And so for those that know, Glenn Sanford is now the you know, multi-billion dollar owner of visionary founder of EXP Realty, but back then he wasn't that guy, yeah, he, he was that guy in essence. I recognized a lot of what he had going on, but but he was just a struggling uh, expansion team leader, just like everybody else in real estate, right? He was struggling to try and crack the code, right? He was trying to break the code, build build a multi-level 17. Well, basically, if you remember, anybody read the uh, Red Book, Gary Keller Red Book? So the Red Book is, uh, it talks about creating a million dollar residual business for yourself. Right, so the seventh level, it's not sell a million in sales, it's not, it's not, ha it's get a million in passive. You wanna hear something crazy about, and I'm not here to talk bad about any brokerage, but it's kinda of cool. You know, that one piece that Gary brought to the business, the profit share piece, that allowed them to become the biggest brokerage in the world. And based on just bringing profit share, some form of passive, into the uh, real estate space. I mean, it had been around in other industries, but he brought it into the real estate space, and they became the biggest in the world. You know how many people have come and gone from Ke from Keller over the last, I don't know, 30 years? John, how many would you guess? Probably about uh, three or 400,000. At least, right? I mean, if they're currently 150, I would put probably close to a million. I bet a million agents have come and gone over EXP. Let's even call it half a million, all right? We'll say half a million. Um, I just heard this stat the other day. Out of all the people in, 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 that have come and gone, from Keller, and they publish this stuff, so I'm not, you know, this isn't anything that you can't figure out. A um, hundred have received over a million or more in career profit share. A hundred out of a million, even a hundred out of 500,000. Somebody do the math on that, that's not a great number. All right, so that's a small percentage. So a hundred people have received over a million in 
profit share. Does anybody know how much we paid out in gross commission revenue share last year alone? 100 million. 100 million in revenue share and o over 2 billion in equity. So I think you're thinking equity. So we've given out over 2 billion in equity since we went public in 2013. But just last year alone, in 2020, we gave out over $100 million in passive income, okay? By the way, we're 60,000 agents, okay? Um, and uh, we, it took us 12 years to get there. This is a crazy stat. We'll add more agents in the next 12 months than we added in the last 12 years. We're averaging over 1,000 a week net gain. We're opening up three countries a quarter, okay? And so we'll probably be, you know, in the next couple of years, we'll probably be at 50 plus countries. We'll probably be, our goal is to be half a million global by the end of this decade. Okay, so there's, I think there's 20 million real estate agents in the world or 20, 20 million real estate professionals. So how do you get on this side of the equation, right? That's the key. All right, who had a good year last year? John, Michelle, I know you did. <laughs> How did you, you, well, you're in a luxury uh, client group, so you must be doing it. Um, you tell me, what's a good year for you? Well, you have two good years. Go ahead. Well, not good year, Arizona. Okay. <laughs> I'm more of a Lynchfield Park guy. Uh, well, like, give me a number in terms of sales volume. Just throw out a number. Yeah, sure. Last year. Okay. That's a great year. Okay, that's a, that's a fantastic great year. And already passed it this year. Wow. But so what will, the, what will an average agent do a year in sales, would you guys say? You know, 10, 12, 13 deals a year, right? If they're lucky. So you'll do five, 10, 15, 20 homes a year, okay? So, so who, who did 10 plus more homes last year? Raise your hand, okay? Okay, how many are you gonna do next year? 30. 30, okay, what about the year after that? Oh, you're gonna do a hundred. You're gonna have a shot and shot. You probably will be. Um, but so you're gonna, you know, so you know, but it's like, okay, do you ever get to stop? And now you're at EXP, but pretend you aren't, right? And I'm asking you these questions. I'm going, well, you sold, you know. So what's the difference between selling ten houses this year and fifteen next year? You're just gonna have to work harder, right? I mean, because you know, when when someone says, hey, uh, I got, I want to sell more houses, I just hear they have to work harder. Because you have to do the same amount of effort, you know. There's only so much of you. There's only so many houses that you can sell in a 12-month period, right? Now, obviously, you can leverage time. You can leverage people. You can do some things to your sales business. But ultimately, this is sales income. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna kind of change this around a little bit, so we all understand Kiyosaki. I'm gonna turn this into the family income, right? This is your family household now. Okay. So I'm gonna say, let's just pretend this is sort of the family finances, right? And uh, you know you get you got a commission on every house you sold last year, Lauren, right? Mm -hmm. So I assume you get that commission. Do you get that commission again, or just once? Just once, just once right? So you get paid 10, 20, 30 commissions a year, okay? Um, and then you start over, do it again next year, right? Start over, do it again. How long have you been in real estate, Lauren? In my fifth year. Fifth year, okay. Um, what's your exit strategy? Well, now or? Yeah, well, yeah. What's your exit strategy now? Just to build a team that. Grow these Passive two, income. grow these two bad boys. Yeah, right. So, but most agents, right? When we were in real estate school, did they ever talk about exit strategy with you, Jonah? When you were in real estate school, no. they talk about why not? Why didn't they talk about exit strategy? Because they want you there. Go ahead. There really is they a want you there. Well, right. Well, sure, absolutely. There is a little bit of that going on, but like, because there is no exit strategy for real estate, right? Like, is there? I mean, Mauricio, you've been doing real estate how long, brother? 20 years. 20 years. Why aren't you retired, man? Uh, <laughs> and you did it at a high level. Yeah. Well, yeah. well going into the seven level is, is, is very difficult. And, and, and taking 40% to the bottom line is not real. It's very difficult to get. And I assume you did the bulk of that work over that 20-year period, right? You know? Um, and if something happened to you or you got hurt or had a, a sick family member or wanted to take a month off and go to Europe or go back down to Columbia, could you do that? No, no you can't You can't leave your phone. We work nights, we work weekends, right? We, we burn holes in our elbows and in, in, in the bottom of our shoes showing houses, right? You get chased by javelina, uh, true story. Um, so yeah, so you go to this, you know, five, 10, 50, 20 homes a year and you rack over, you start over at zero and you do this every year, year after year after year and it starts to look like what? What does this really start to look like? Hamster wheel. Hamster wheel, right? Here you are, running on the hamster wheel. Five years, snap your fingers, five years goes by. Snap your fingers. How, how fast did your five years in real estate go by, Lauren, by the way? Pretty quickly. 
pretty quick. Snappy fingers 10 years is going to go by. Snappy fingers 20 years is going to go by. And guess what? You're going to be no further along than you were in your first year. Okay? Now, you better be a good saver or a good investor if all you're making is transactional income. Oh, and don't get hurt. Take out a big insurance policy. Don't break your hip like I did when I fell off my mountain, my cheesy Walmart mountain bike and broke my hip. Okay? Well, here's the good news about EXP. Okay? We've added two additional things to our income compensation plan that you get from primarily doing just this, okay? We've added what, what we have now is a uh, stock program, okay? So we're a publicly traded company. We traded the NASDAQ, by the way. Nothing I say is official company business in case uh, uh, there's anybody from the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission here. I'm actually just a retired shareholder. So again, I, I used to be the first president. I was the chief cultural officer, um, one of the founding members, but but ultimately I'm just a shareholder agent like everybody else in this room, okay? I just want to make sure I disclose that. All right, so, so when I talk about stock, when I talk about things, you know, don't run and call the newspaper and go, the, the co-founder said uh, stock's gonna go down, okay? Because I have no idea, like every, anybody else, okay? But so let's say, you know, so Lauren's selling her houses, boom, 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 boom. Now Lauren's at EXP, guess what she gets? She gets stock from just selling houses, right? She can actually earn stock five ways and all five of them are based in production. Okay, she gets $200 worth of stock when she does her first deal every year. So I'm gonna write 200 right here. $200 worth of stock. And we do that on purpose. We want everyone, Joan, have you to close the deal yet at EXP? Uh, just a couple of leases I'm working okay. with. Okay, as soon as you close your first deal, guess what you're gonna get on top of your commission? You're gonna get $200 worth of stock. And you know why we wanna do that for you, Joan? Because we want you to think differently about yourself. You know, Glenn hired me, and uh, uh, you can, yeah, we can, yeah, we can do that. When Glenn hired me, the first thing he said to me, and I always remember this because it was very, 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 very uh, impactful to me. He said, Brian, every real estate agent should start a brand and call themselves the CEO of their brand. He said, your vibration levels are gonna elevate. And I was like, you're crazy, dude. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I just wanna sell some houses, man. And, uh, and by the way, here I was on his team at another brokerage, right? I was like the third or fourth brand on the totem pole. And he's telling me, start my own brand. But the, key, but the key piece was he was telling me that I was going to start thinking differently about myself. I was going to start to, you know, go to nicer restaurants. I would drive nicer cars. I would carry myself differently. I'd put little pocket squares in my jacket, right? I'd start to wear a jacket even. And, uh, and, and so he was elevating my vibration levels. Okay, now there's some, we could, I could do an hour on that too, but we'll, I'll spare you guys. But, but this is part of that, right? This is the extension of that. We want you to think of yourself as a shareholder at EXP. Not just an employee, not just agent, independent contractor, not an account executive. You know, um, you know. Uh, let me pick up Michael. Michael, uh, you've had a pretty awesome career. Uh, actually, I'm not going to pick up Michael. What you name? <laughs> uh, Danny. Danny, what do you do for a living? Unemployed right now. Unemployed. What was your last job? I worked for Lululemon. For Lululemon. Okay, you were probably a sales manager or something. When Danny, when you were 12 years old, was your dream to grow up someday to be a sales manager? Right. Was it to grow up to be an agent, you know, uh, independent contractor at some other brokerage? No, it was probably to be a freaking, you know, professional pitcher or something, right? In golf. In golf. <laughs> well, that dream's still alive because you can probably make money until you're about 60 in golf. Um, so, but, but here, the, my point is none of us sat around when we were like 10, 12 years old and said, I, my someday, my dream is to work for somebody else's vision or work for somebody else's brand or work for somebody else's company, right? We all had these goals and these dreams and we wanted to get there. And then something got in the way, life happened, people told us no too many times or whatever. But, but we wanna get you back to that. You know, we wanna get you on this side. We wanna get you into the investor mindset. By the way, as soon as you close a deal at EXP, guess what part of the quadrant you're in now? You're in the money zone, right? You're in the wealth zone. You're down here, you're an investor. Guess what you're gonna start paying attention to, by the way? Stock, the market. Uh, you might buy some more stock. You might buy some other company stock. So now you're in the game. And the, by the way, I didn't know a thing about stock until I had any. Okay, I didn't know a damn thing. My dad had one share of Home Depot. <laughs> it's a true story. He always talked about it, you know, that Home Depot. Man, I'm so proud that I got that Home Depot stock. He, like, I don't know if you have any rap, rap fans from the 90s, but he would wear that, that, that share like flavor flavor on his neck, right? He's like, check out the share of stock. I remember I asked him, like, how many shares do we have, Dad? He's like, just one. <laughs> <laughs> so, but now I got a lot of stock, okay? I got a lot of stock, right? So I paid a lot of attention to it. By the way, I wasn't just given a lot of stock. I was actually given 
uh, a lot of options at 12 cents a share. And I didn't know what options were when I got them. And I was actually pissed because it was only worth about 60 grand at the time. Little did I know, right? All right, so anyways, $200 worth of stock when you do your first deal every year. You also get $400 worth of stock when you cap. Did anybody in here cap at EXP yet so far or capped before? Allie's cap, Warren's cap. So you got, you didn't just get a little paper certificate. You got like a paper certificate with like money attached to it, right? It was a, a it, was, it was actually worth something, $400 worth of stock. You get $400 worth of stock for everybody you sponsor when they do their first deal, right? And any icons in here? More, and keep your hand up. You get icon. Guess what you get? When, what'd you get when you hit icon, Warren? I got eight thousand back in stock. No, nope. uh, well, only eight. Well, well, you have the opportunity to invest back too, right? Well, all right. So the award is you get your sixteen thousand back in stock. It's a scheduled vest over three-year, four-year period, and you get some of it right away, some of it over course period. You got to do some, go to some events, but it, in principle. She's got her $16,000 stock award, right? Um, so if you think whatever the average stock price was over the last year, we call it maybe 20 bucks a share, um, she just got $16,000 divided by 20. If anybody has a calculator, Matt, you can, you know, give me my, let me, I'll use my phone for a second. So if you pull, well, and we'll do that math in a second, but but if you, well, let's just do it. So she, she did $16,000 worth of stock divided by 20 bucks a share, 800 shares. If she would have done this earlier in the year, the stock possibly would have doubled so it would have been like 1600 and we're now she's trading at what, 54 bucks a share, 53. So it's $86,000, right? So her $16,000 investment has already potentially yielded, you know, tens of thousands of dollars of return for her, okay? And if that's if the stock doesn't go up another penny. Now again, stock could go up, could go down, I get it. But, you know, my theory is if you look at our stock chart, which is kind of like one of these, right? And you look at our agent count, which is kind of like one of these. Okay, so if we're trading at 50 bucks a share and we're 60,000 today, what are we going to be trading at when we're 500,000 agents? Right? Your guess is as good as mine, but I'm going to hang out in my stock a little longer. Okay, that's my plan. All right, and the last way you can get stock or buy stock is at a discount. So you can actually take 5% of your gross commission and you can get 10% off stock. And you can do this whether you're capped or not. All right, now I'm gonna come back to Jean Michel. John, when was the first time you heard of EXP, brother? A couple of years ago. And you average 60 million a year, you'd say? You're not gonna wanna hear this. All right, so if, let's just say you came over, I'm just gonna say two years ago, okay? So 60 million times two, 120 million, I'm gonna do maybe even 0.02%, so I won't even get crazy, I'm gonna do 2%. So Two and a half million average GCI over the last two years, potentially, you know, maybe a million plus a year. Okay. And then I'm going to take 5%. So I'm just going to focus on this first award, the bottom award down there, the equity agent program or agent equity program. I'm going to times 0.05. So it would have been about $120,000 that would have come out of your account. It goes into a Morgan Stanley ShareWorks tracking system. You could literally sell it tomorrow for the upside. Okay. I would, you could. Okay. But you would have had, oh, but you got the markup, so I'm gonna add back 12 grand on top of that. So you'd actually add $132,000 worth of buying power. Now look, you can pull this up, Matt, if you wanna to go to EX, uh, just go to Yahoo and type in EXPI. Yeah. Because I don't wanna think anybody I'm doing like, I used to do card tricks, so I don't wanna think I'm doing, doing a little, a little uh, shell game over here. So if you look up uh, EXPI on the stock ticker, just go two years out, maybe, or five years, it doesn't matter, you can look at two years out that's cool so if you just go back two years right just run the ticker to like maybe 2019 so look three four five bucks a share just kind of slowly go okay five bucks just i mean a little a little faster <laughs> <laughs> i got a flight to catch. all right so you know get to about here you know so again you know sub 10 bucks got into the 20s for a hot second we jumped up to 80 for like the when we split back down where's that low again the, 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 the this little peak right here go to here so back down to time. So what would be over the last two years? Someone just tell me some math. Somebody who's better at math than me. What would be a good average over the last two years? Looking at those numbers. Twenty-five. Let's go twenty-five. So I'm going to divide that one hundred thirty-two by twenty-five bucks a share. So it'd been about five thousand shares, and we did have a split event this year. So you would have had um, 
if you would have kept all that stock, you'd have got double, so I'm gonna times two. So we've been about 10,000 shares of stock. And then what are we trading at right now? 53.44. Times 53.44. And what was his original investment? Third, 132. 32 yeah. grand? 132. I'm take out 132. So Jean-Michel, you left half a million bucks on the table, brother. Just doing exactly what you would have done at that other broker. Did you get half a million bucks from Russell Lyon? That's a, good, that's a lot. That's a good vacation. That's a couple good vacations. That's a, and by the way, that's if the stock doesn't go up another dime. Oh, but it gets worse because you also would have been an icon. So that's sixteen thousand dollars worth of stock times two years uh, divided by uh, twenty five times fifty four. It would have been another sixty nine thousand in just being an icon. So you're coming close to over half a million bucks just from these two awards. Okay. Now that's the bad news. The good news is you don't have to keep doing that. You can join us today. You can <laughs> All right. But that's the point. I don't, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to embarrass. I'm, what I'm really trying to say is, let me even give you a crazier stat. If you would have been an icon agent with us in 2015, first year, it would have been 8 million. That year we were 30 cents a share, $16,000 divided by 30 cents a share is 53,000 shares that would have doubled. So you'd have over a hundred thousand shares that now be worth over $5.4 million. Not bad for a $16,000 investment, is it? How's that return, Gabe? Pretty freaking sweet, right, brother? <laughs> okay? Yeah, it's amazing, right? Uh, that's the power of the forced multiplier effect. Okay? I just learned this. Uh, Ali, you, you, I'm probably going to butcher the hell out of it. But we just learned from Brandon Dawson, who's a master of scale, that you, you cannot get wealthy being an independent business. You cannot get wealthy just doing transactional sales. You cannot sell. Now you can you can have a nice life. You know you can you can get rich selling that. I mean, listen, Jean Michel is killing. It. Like, don't make don't make no mistake. I mean, he's he's probably a multi million. And he's been killing. It. But you probably also been busting your butt too, right? And you didn't just you weren't just born a sixty million dollar a year guy, right? I mean, how many years have you been doing this? Yeah, I mean that's a long time, right? So he's been killing it. 22 years, just crushing it. And you know, I mean, he's built up a huge business for himself, but can he leave his business to his kids? Can he will it to his future generations? Can he take months off? Can he just shut it down today and the business keeps going? I would say probably, maybe, possibly not. Now he can leave his money, he can be a good investor, he can be a good saver, and I'm sure he's all that. And, I, and again, just thank you for playing along with me. But, but what really, Listen, I'm not as good as Jean-Michel. I'll never be as good as a real estate agent. I'll never be as good as a real estate agent as Michael Banovic, Michael O'Malley, Ali Wise. I mean, you guys are the best. I mean, I literally learned just being at your open house the other day. You're amazing. She knew everything about this house. I would walk in houses. I didn't know anything about the house. I was, I was like, I think it's Cantera. I don't know. He's like, is those dovetail drawers? I'm like, I think so. He's like, no, my dad's a cabinet maker. They're not dovetail. I'm like, why did you ask me? I don't know anything. I'm just the guy with the keys. That was actually Glenn's advice to me. He said, Brian, I just say, I'm just the guy with the keys. I open them up. You pick them out. I'm like, that sounds easy. Let's go. All right. So, but multi-economic multi monetization model. That's what EXP stands for, right? The E stands for multi <laughs> Economic, right? But that's it. EXP is a multi economic monetization model where you get paid multiple income streams for doing what you're already doing selling houses and interacting with the people, with people, with other real estate agents, etc. So, check this out. So, now as Lauren's selling her houses, she's getting that stock. Guess where that goes? That goes into family finances, too. Okay, then we're going to add this third line. Okay, and this is starting to look a lot like a triangle. Who's gonna, don't say pyramid. <laughs> we don't say that, no. We actually, we do say that. But, but pyramids, actually everything's a pyramid, by the way, guys. Like, think about this, right? You think about, you got CEOs at the top, you got your, your, your economic monetization model. Okay, we're a publicly traded company. We're a, we're, we, we've got a comp plan that rewards people for not just being top producers, but also for helping the company grow. So you're in another brokerage, you do a deal with a cross sale and you might like that person. You might go, hey, I really like you. Should, you know, we should do some business together. But unfortunately, I can barely support myself in real estate, right? You know, Gabe, you partner with Brandon, right? Okay, in the, in, in the old model, if you wanted to partner with, with your, your buddy, what would you have to have done to pull him into your business? Go the traditional 
and start a team, right? And then provide to him, right? You'd have to give him leads and training or, you know what I mean? Like either you're the team leader and you've got people on your team, but it's hard to just partner and collaborate, right? Because ultimately if you're sitting in an office, any other office in America, and, and you've got another agent sitting next to you, who do they really, what do they really represent to you and your business? Competition. Okay, so we're kind of trained to think, oh, we're kind of, we don't like share with each other. We're kind of like lone wolfy, right? We don't really like work together. We don't collaborate together. I was just saying to somebody, I don't, I think it was, tell me your name again. Miranda. Miranda. I said, what did I say this morning? I said, well, I'm in the best business because why? Because my business is my friends and my friends are my business. Okay, it's the best I business I could do. <laughs> I did say that. Um, it's the best thing you can do, right? My brother's not with us. My wife's with me. I just recruited my sister. I recruited a bunch of best friends from high school. I've got friends and family from all over the world coming to join us because I'm in the best system possible. And not just in real estate, by the way. Like I would put this model up against any business. I mean, it's, it, does anybody know, and, and RC, you're a business guy, you know? You, you've seen a lot of models, you're, you're a numbers guy. Have you seen opportunities in, the, in, in other industries that are as lucrative or more lucrative than this? Not at all. I mean, I work with a lot of, I have a tax business. I work with a lot of real estate agents. And I, to me, this by far makes the most sense uh, for an agent. I did not pay him to say that. No, Thank you, sir. Really, you probably really get my tax really business. My account said actually the same thing yesterday. He said, this is amazing. You should, I mean, listen, show this to money people. Show this to your wealth advisor. Show this to your mortgage people like Shane and Landon, right? Because the money people get this right away. You know, successful people get this. But as a matter of fact, um, who, who, who else is in, you know, Tarek's organization? We got uh, the Lecters, right? Sharon and, and uh, Michael Lecter wrote the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, wrote the book Outwitting the Devil, wrote the book Exit Rich. She looked at our model and she said, Michael, go get your freaking license. We're doing this. And by the way, they didn't need another job, did they? No. Who else just joined us that didn't need another job? Cardone's. The Cardones. Anybody, a few of you are in the Cardone? Resources underneath Elena. Okay, uh, that story is incredible. Elena Cardone, they had a month to get ready for their biggest conference since post COVID. They had 5,000 people descending on Miami. She had a month to go get her real estate license. She raised her hand and said, I'll go do it because her and Grant looked at the EXP model and they said, We got to do this. This was her chance to create impact lives, build up a big giant business. And she is so gung ho. She is so all in. It's incredible. She's not just the face on the box. She's actually the engine behind the machine too. Allie, am I kidding? Nope. She's killing it. She just cracked what, 200 agents in her first 90 days? She's at 215. 215 in her first 90. That's like incredible. She basically just broke the four minute mile. Because before her, bringing in three or four a month was good, right? Like one a month was solid, right? She's bringing in five a week. It's incredible. And now, but, 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 oh, she's famous. Right? Shay, you said that, right? She's famous. She, of course, she could do that. No, here's the cool thing. Because she showed what was possible, there's a girl underneath her, a lady underneath her called named Claudia Ann. Get her. Claudia Ann is bringing in one a day because she's following the lead. She's following the leader. She's using uh, the same stuff that Elena implemented. And she just immediately, she's, the, <laughs> she's a faster implementer than me. Okay, and I thought I was a pretty quick implementer. But here's the cool part. You start telling your friends, and we got, that should be seven lines, by the way. You, and you got seven generations, if you want to pull that slide up, Matt, maybe pull up the red share slide. You've got seven generations worth of uh, people that you can receive cash flow off of, okay? Cash flow is king. I don't have that shirt on today. Cash flow is king. Okay, cash flow is this, <coughs> passive, right? Now you can get cash flow off of equity too, but cash, cash flow is, Money that shows up whether you get out of bed or not. It's not transactional income, it's wealth building income. It's a legacy play. It's something you can leave behind for family and future generations that'll exist long past your last sale. Okay, because if you do get hurt or something happens, you need to take a month off or have a sick family member. John, you had a sick family member recently, right? Where's John Lincoln? Is he still in here? John had a good friend of mine, John, he's been with me for many years. He's been to the top of the mountain, top agent with, uh, uh, what was his name again, Mike Mendoza. Yeah, top, he was number one guy, then he had a divorce, knocked him off the mountain. He, he, he doesn't mind me sharing this story because this is, this is his story. And he, he fell off the mountain, then he built himself back up, became another top agent, and then his dad got sick, 84-year-old man. 
he thought he was going to spend a couple months with him and end up being a two-year situation. His dad moved in with him. He couldn't leave his dad home alone for an hour. I mean, he was basically a full-time caregiver. Couldn't leave his dad home for an hour because his dad would slip and fall. Do you think that helped his real estate business, by the way? Not being able to leave the house for more than an hour? Probably not. Okay, so here's a guy that was on top of the mountain, knocked off, top of the mountain again, knocked off, built himself back up, still, and, and thank gosh he was a part of EXP because guess what he got that whole time? He got this, right? He had that passive, just enough to cover the month. Just so like when I got hurt, remember Christy, when I got hurt, fell off my mountain bike, 2011, uh, Christy was pregnant with our second kid. Um, I was on top of the world, I thought I was. I was you know, a young guy in my mid thirties, we just started EXP, things were happening, I was making three, four grand a month, took my bike for, tried to bunny hop a curb like it was a BMX, fell over, broke the ball off my femur, cracked it, clean off, and uh, I couldn't walk for nine months. I literally had a walker, I did this for nine months. I couldn't even do that, I was like this. And Christy will tell you, I mean it was, it was, tough. It was probably tougher on Christy than me. <laughs> No, uh, looking back, but it was a brutal, brutal. And by the way, it wasn't over after eight months. No. You know, I had the rehab. I had, uh, by the way, that the, the original surgery wasn't a, a replacement. It died after two years. I got the replacement in 2013, and then it started it over again. And so basically for five years, I was on and off pain pills. I was laying around. I was just feeling sick and tired and near death and just not feeling good, trying to raise kids, trying to build a company. The only good thing out of that entire period was what? The only silver lining was I was getting passive income. Because imagine this, imagine Christy was actually working with me. So we were a team, we were a family team, but one basically it's a real estate family, right? She wasn't at the, she wasn't working over with uh, RC, you know, collecting a big check or she wasn't working at the, you know, Banner Health uh, with a big benefits package. She was basically the team transaction coordinator. So she got paid off the commissions just like I did. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, the family breadwinner falls off and can't walk for eight months and we're a commission-based family. What do you think would happen to us, honey? I, I always say what I think would happen, but I'd like to know what your answer is, truthfully. What do you yeah. think would happen to us if, if, we, if we weren't a part of EXP? Yeah, we would have, I mean, I would have had to go out and work somewhere doing something that I didn't want to do pregnant. probably. Pregnant. Yeah, it would have been bad. Yeah. I mean, we had nobody Six out months here pregnant, right you would have gone to work. Yeah. Or we what else? We couldn't even afford daycare, remember that? Yeah, we like, couldn't even afford daycare. What else would we have? Uh, I mean, probably that wouldn't even have worked, right? Because right. I we had a baby at home. Yeah. Uh, we would have gone home to my dad. We probably would have moved back That's to Ohio. What That's what I always say. We'd, I'd be home milking cows with grandpa. <laughs> it's a true story. Birthing cows, though, because he's a vet. But <laughs> milk them, too. All right, so... Um, so here's the cool part, and this is kind of the home run piece, right? So I don't, so look, I'll do a million this year in revenue share, easy, okay? I've got a lot of stock, but I'm also having the best sales year. But here's, here's my business model in a nutshell, okay? The more houses I sell, the more stock I get, the more people I bring in, the more houses I sell, the more stock I get, the more people I bring in, the more houses, the more stock, the more people, the more houses, the more stock, the more people. And this becomes a business synergy system, okay? I made that up but it sounds great, business <laughs> synergy system, trademark pending, right? But my business synergy system, right? Kiyosaki cash quadrants, teams and systems. My system, my multi-economic monetization model called EXP, basically creates perpetual motion, okay? The more sales I get, the more people, the more stock, the more sales. And by the way, I take some of that stock and I, I go, you know, I do some things with it. I do events. I you know, uh, I invest in other things, I do other stuff. So it almost starts to ping pong off each other, right? You know, I take, oh, by the way, I take some of my, my passive and I reinvest it into what? Leads, marketing, signs, business cards, shirts, all kinds of cool stuff, videos. You know, my brother and I are starting a production company and a lot of what he does is headshots for our agents and does, you know, sizzle videos like we did with Christine Ong, who's not here today, but I think some of you might be guessing Christine, so thank you for coming. But so we do videos, we do all this stuff, because what does that do? It repeats the loop. It, it increases my sales business. So if you're sitting here going, well, Brian, I don't want to do all this other stuff because I'm a sales person. I don't, want, I don't want anything to come in between me and my sales business. Let me just tell you, this and this is going to blow your sales business out of the water. And not only that, it's going to make your sales business even better. We'll probably do 10 million this year in my name. You know how many showings I went on this year? Zero. Zero. You know how many listings I took this year? How many listing presentations I gave this year? One. 
the Zero. Did we do more? Maybe we did wrong. Uh, no, uh, the You're a listing presentation is basically bringing the listing contract and having. Yeah, my listing presentation is here. Let, let's sign up. Um, and I wasn't that good. I lost more listings than I sold, by the way. I was not that good. Uh, but I'm going to do better than most real estate agents will ever do because I'm a part of a better system. All right. So let's talk about any questions on any of this, by the way. I mean, am I going too fast? Is this good stuff? You guys appreciate this. So I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be like Mr. Awesome up here. I just feel like, you know, I mean, by the way, our brand is now how many people can we help? You know, my wife and I made a decision probably, what, three years ago. We were sitting there. Our well, our ships had just come in. You know, we started making some good money and stock was going up. And I remember I said to Christy, I said, Christy, uh, what do you want to do? What would you say back? Well, we want to show everybody how to do what we're doing. I mean, I did say. I said, do you want to just go vacation. sit on the beach and count our <laughs> I go, we did take a couple, few vacations yeah. too. But I said, do you want to just sit on the beach and count our money all day? Or what do you want to do? What would you say? We need to help people. And how many people can we help sitting, sitting on, on the beach, beach counting our right? money? So we doubled down, we tripled down, we invested in our people, we invested in our businesses, we brought in staff, we brought in all kinds of amazing stuff because we want to help people get there. And somebody asked me on a podcast the other day, they said, Brian, what's your definition of success? And I said, you know what? I'm not a success until Ali Wise is a success. I'm not a success until Shea Castro is a success, right? Um, you're not a recruiter until your recruits recruit a recruiter, okay? So I'm not a success until, I can't be the only one that made it in this model. You know, I want my brother to be a success. Right now, I mean, we just sat down the other day. What did we talk about? Yeah, how to how I can blow myself up or how elevate to, myself. What, what is your definition of success? When I talk to somebody now, one of the first questions I ask them is, I say, what's your definition of success? What's your definition of success? It's different, but I would say take care of my family. <laughs> what would be, uh, what should everyone's goal be in business? Freedom. Ah, thank you. you. You must have studied. Uh, <laughs> financial freedom. But, but I don't even say there's something better than financial freedom. Time freedom. Time freedom. Because financial freedom gets you time freedom, right? Um, time freedom is the best. What is time freedom? Well, the definition, in my opinion, is doing what you want as much as you want, as often as you want, with whoever you want, right? I mean, it's not just being able to sit on a park bench and smoke pot all day. I mean, although that may sound awesome for some people. Um, and, and I'm not saying it's not, uh, but it's not time freedom, okay? Uh, and you can't do it all day, every day, right? So so time freedom is as much as you want, as often as you want, whenever you want. You want. And, uh, and the only way, and by the way, you can't work on time freedom. You can't work on financial freedom. That's the dirtiest secret of all. There's, no, there's nothing you can do to go, I'm going to work on financial freedom. You can't even work on relationships. You know what you can work on, though? yourself yeah work on yourself and that's what's so cool that's the only work you can do my wife and i have this talk a lot we say you know we, you know it's every in a lot of relationships whether it's parents spouses siblings family members partners you know you always want to point out what they're doing wrong oh you need to change and you need to get better and you just you never do this and you never scratch my back at night and, and <laughs> if i'm getting too personal like tell me honey um but the reality is, is like, I should be seeing what I'm doing. Like, you know, so we have a, a line in our family. The best thing I can do for my wife is to work on me. And the best thing my wife can do for me is to continue to work on her, right? And that works with family, business partners, et cetera. And EXP at some level is a personal improvement company. You know, it's a, it's a person multiplication company. Um, I've got people growing around the country, and not, not even just around the country. We've got what? Couple hundred people in Mexico, a couple yeah. hundred people in India. I haven't been to Portugal. India. Portugal, Spain, UK, Canada, Mexico. I, I've never been to any of those places. <laughs> I've been to Mexico once or twice. I kind of, kind of went into Canada for a hot second. Um, but I was a poor kid. I didn't get to travel much. You know, I, I'm just now kind of figuring all the, these cool places to go to, uh, like Vancouver, Washington. If anybody has a $13 million buyer, talk to Ali. <laughs> Beautiful house. All right, so any questions on the stock? How am I doing, Gabe? Do you want me to talk, talk about anything else? or are we... No, man, this is awesome. This have I said good. enough for you guys to make your decision yet, Jean-Michel? Have, have I showed you enough to make a decision yet? Do you have any questions for me or any, anything I say? Anybody want to challenge anything I talk about? Go ahead. I have a quick question. So, so Pull up the right, rusher calculator. Are you a mega team? Or say that again? A mega team? You want me to talk about a mega team? No, are you, are, are you like a 
No, not at all. I'm a hybrid team. So I have a local sales team called the AZ Life team. The way I run my business is I put a lot of my frontliners on my local team, especially the new, new to real estate or people that are struggling. And then I say, but listen, this is not a lifetime employment. You know, I want you, you shouldn't be on my team for more than two years. Because what we really want to do is go back to what Glenn said. We want them to work on their own personal brand. Right. So the faster I can get them, you know, to dialed in, get their head right, their mindset right, get their packaging right, and push them out of the nest to go create their own 100-person organization. I mean, the fastest way to make a million a month in the EXP would be to find 100 leaders and show them how to go build 100-person organizations. That'd be 10,000 people, and if they were all, all 10,000 were just a million dollar a year producer, that'd be 10 million a year. And actually, let's, let's talk about that. So let me share, share with you guys the revenue share calculator. So revsharecalculator.com, R-E-V, sharecalculator.com. Also not an official company site. It just happens to perfectly go along with our, I just found this on the internet, it was so random. Uh, but it just happens to person, because we're really, I'm not making income claims. So these are just scientific wild ass guesses, okay? Um, also known as swags. Um, but these are, this is, this is just an example or some scenarios that I can run that will show you the power of the revenue share model itself. All right, so someone else, throw me a number. How many, like, and don't even think like yourself or like a good agent, like what is like just barely a full-time agent do in terms of sales a year? Somebody throw me a line. Five a year, let's put it five. And then uh, average price property in the United States is? 300. 300, that's perfect. So what is that, $1.5 million a year producer. Okay, if they're doing any less than that, they're not full time. They've got a rich family member or something, or they don't love, they hate money. Okay, and we'll put, let's put 2.5. Let's even shoot low. Okay, all right. Uh, so, who wants to throw out a number that's not with the XP? Not with the XP. Oh, let's say with, with, with my man in the back, Jam. Uh, how many people do you know in real estate? You should, yeah, go ahead. Me? Yeah. How many real estate agents do you think you know? Agents? Yeah. Three, four hundred. Three, four hundred, right? I mean, oh. and that's probably just in his cell phone, right? Imagine if he got into his Facebook. His, in person. Yeah, it, it, like in probably, person. Could, probably could think of three, four hundred off the top of his head. Uh, how many of those do you think you could introduce to me and uh, Lauren in the next 12 months? Hundred, fifty. Let's say four. Twenty. Let's say you introduce twenty and only four come over. So let's put four in. Okay. We'll put the big number in then. And then I'm just going to say, let's say they only bring one each in. So you're four bringing one each, and you got four. Let's calculate that. They're all doing one point five million a year. Survey says you're making an extra fifty five hundred a year in passive. Okay, not so bad, not so great. But go back down a second. I want to show, so pay attention real quick. So level one income, you're making that big money. You actually get 3.5% gross commission off of their, 3.5% their, residual off of their gross commission. So if they're doing 1.5 million, you get 3.5% of that gross, okay? It's a good number, it's big money. I mean, the average uh, broker, by the way, according to NAR in the United States, Matt, Mike, what's the average broker, uh, O'Malley, in the, in the uh, uh, United States net profit per transaction. Do you know the number? Uh, <clears throat> not per transaction. Annually, it's fifty-three thousand. Three point eight percent per transaction. Okay, you're getting three point five percent gross. Do you have to review contracts? By the way, is your liability on the line? Do you have to put up infrastructure? Do you got to provide tools, training, support, marketing, lead generation, technology? No, 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 no. Okay, all you got to do is say. Hey, come to the lunch and learn. Look at the person who invited you right now. Look at who invited you. Look how hard they're working right now. Okay. <laughs> this is not hard, guys. It's not hard. All right, so all right, so let's say um, this is hard. Though. This is really hard. All right, so let's say, but I want to show you. Look at that second line. You're only making three hundred bucks. Three second level is actually worth four percent more than the NAR average. Well, how do you get that four percent? Go back up to the top line, please, and put in five. So we're gonna add one person, and then go down so you can see all the numbers before you hit calculate, and then hit calculate. Watch that 300. That one. So he added one person, and then added one person. So you've 10 people 
they all stink at selling houses, and now you're already at 14 grand. And guess what? You're not even touching three four, through seven yet. Okay? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go back up to the line, we're gonna just add ones in all the way through. So again, and now remember this number, five, okay? So you, you five people that you personally sponsor unlocks level two. Hit calculate real quick. So I wanna unlock, now I'm doing, hey, I'm starting to figure this game out. I bring in five people a year. I've unlocked level two income. Everybody else just brings in one person total. Okay, not a year, not a month, one total. I wanna unlock level three, power in the number five. Let's change that five to a 10. Okay, now by the end of your second year, now you're cooking. You bring in one a quarter, two over the holidays. Okay, let's calculate that. Boom, okay? You just turned that 188 into nine grand. Now you're making more than the average salary in the United States, okay? Um, now check this out, let's go back up. So every five unlocks another level deeper. So 15 gets you level, 15 gets you level four, calculate. 20 gets you level five, 25 will get you level six. And to open up all levels, go back up and put in 40. Okay, so let's say, let's say you bring in 10 people a year for four years, okay, less than one a month. That's not great, it's good, it's not great. Okay, you should make that, you should make your goal two a month, right? At least, maybe two a week. Let's make your goal two a week. The fail four and you end up with two a month. All right, so at 10 a year, four years, you are now close, did you calculate? Did you yeah. You calculate? Yep. So you're sitting at 300 grand a year, okay? That's not bad, I mean, that's decent money. Plus, you got all that stock, you did all your sales, and that money continues to grow and grow and grow and grow. All right, now I'm gonna put in John, John from Sales about Birds. Let's just put, and here's the cool thing. By the way, folks, they're not just going to sit at one, okay? Everybody in here has got at least one person already. You know, some are two, some are five. Allie, how many do you have in your first 60 days? Uh, seven in front line, four in second line. So she's bringing in three a month. So she's, you know, she's at one a week. So, so, so let's just change that number to a two. The second? Yeah. Just change them all to twos. And it's just going to be an ungodly number. So we can. So Jean-Michel, if you can just bring in a quarter or, or less in your first year, and everybody else is terrible at this, that's a potential yearly income for you, right there. Like very seriously potential for you. And we can help you do it, right? We'll help you get there fast. Okay, we'll help you catch up. So any questions on the revenue share? You guys liking this so far? Good stuff? How, how are we doing on time? We're almost 1.30? So I probably got to leave in about 10, 15 minutes. So um, well, let's do this. Lauren, why don't you come back up? Maybe Mike will come up, and uh, maybe uh, O'Malley and Gabe, why don't you guys come, come up here and just, I just want to go through some testimonials, share some stories, and listen, guys, if you came here to learn about, like, KV Core, we got it. We got lead generation. We got the best education calendar. I mean, we, all our stuff's great, right? I mean, you can put a brand new agent in the EXP, never talk to him again, and they're going to come out a leaner, meaner, fighting machiner, okay? Well, let's start at the end, Lauren. Why don't you share your testimonial, and we'll just kind of go through and just... So talk about what you were doing pretty quickly and then get into how it's been for you at EXP. All right, so I'm a single mom. I started off with Berkshire Hathaway about four years ago. I was giving them a pretty good portion of my split indefinitely. Uh, not getting stock, not able to really build a team. Um, and I decided I needed some more free time. And I was working too hard and wanted more time with my family. I needed to get my health up to Far and I think one of the biggest things I was looking for was freedom. You know, I wanted to use my time wisely, work smart and hard, but I'd rather, you know, just work smart, <laughs> not as hard. Um, so when I learned about the model with EXP, I got to the point in my business where I was busy enough to start giving off some of my work to build a team. And the EXP platform allowed me to bring people into my network that I could pass stuff off without making a huge sacrifice to my own, you know, pocketbook. Yeah, so for me, it's been a huge benefit because not only do you get stock and all that too, you get rewarded for your success. It's the camaraderie that comes with this brokerage too. You're not competing with the agents around you. Everybody wants everybody to do well. You kind of become like a little family. Everybody's cheerleading. Everybody wants your success because the more successful everybody is, the more successful we are with the stock, with everything. So it's kind of a full circle thing. I want to get off that hamster wheel. 
I don't want to be selling real estate and showing houses every single day. I'd rather be training team and, and like putting effort into building other people up too so that they do well. And then it always pays forward because when they do well, I do well. So. And maybe go into a few HGTV premieres or two. No, I know. <laughs> Tell them about who, who, who's in your upline. Upline? Yeah. Uh, or my soon be down one. <laughs> well, no, don't say that yet because okay. that's uh, your, your um, top, so top secret. Top secret, as Lisa's already told everybody. Yeah, she. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably told everybody too, but yeah. So Tarek El Musa is kind of at the top of our our group, um, and he's been an awesome support as well. He's somebody that you can kind of use for your marketing and resources, and who's one of the most popular people in real estate right now on TV is Tarek El Musa. Um, one thing that I like to say too is like, if you're a person that's investing, like I invest in properties too. I buy, sell, flip, um, do my own thing with that. It's cool to have somebody to to align yourself with in business and your brand, and then that automatically gives you credibility for your sales as well. So. On that. Yeah, I mean, she's got an amazing upline. It actually, uh, you know, uh, Glenn, me, but then it goes to Hoscraft, Lisa Copeland, Tarek. I mean, she's got a pretty amazing group. And, uh, and they're not just, like I said before, your upline are not managers. They're not uh, people beating down your, you know, I might do that a little bit to some, some of you, but, uh, <laughs> But they're not like your managers. They're your. They're, I always say, think of us as Shark Tank investors for your business, yeah. right? How can we help you, Lauren? Like, and, and we try and do events, and we try and you know pump, pump each other up and hold each other accountable. And so, you know, again, doing this business all by yourself is very difficult. Thank you for sharing, Gabe. Yeah. So my story is a little similar. Uh, I was started at Cobalt Banker, and then um, kind of got the training and noticed that uh, they were keeping a lot of my money. So I just wanted to go to another brokerage. So I started at Cobalt Banker, learned about uh, 100% brokerage in Tucson. Um, and then I heard about eXp Realty through Jeff Hannon, who's, who's uh, in Tucson as well. And uh, I learned business model and I said, you know, I'll give it some thought and I, I joined eXp Realty. And my dad's a second generation realtor and he's still showing houses. And I noticed, I, I said, I didn't want to do that, right? I didn't want to show houses unless I have to. I mean, unless I want to when I'm like 60 years old or whatever. 70 years old um, and and so it's given me an option to bring on uh, agents on board I'm making a little bit of revenue share you know and, and uh, the platform has just been amazing uh, it's, I've grown a lot as well as an agent so I think uh, I mean, the, the, the platform is just you don't want to show houses in Sun City till you're 90 yeah no <laughs> it's a nice option yeah. 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 but I like why I said that he said I, you know I may never retire but I want to have the option to slow down, I wanted the option to retire, not have to sell. And so I was showing houses yesterday, and I was like, man, you know what? This is I want to build my organization. Yeah. Level up. Yeah. And by the way, it's not just people in his upline. You know, you 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 connect and network with the, the, the whole EXP organization. This guy's relentless. I mean, he's going to the events. He's trying to meet with people. He's trying because we have some really awesome people in our group, not just your own team, and we all work together. And all the best part about it is. We're all shareholder partners together. Why wouldn't I want him to kick butt, whether he was in my downline or not? Because guess what? He kicks butt, Lauren kicks butt, Ali kicks butt. Guess what happens in the stock? It goes up. The more we all collectively kick butt, the more money we all collectively make. Thank you, Gabe. So I'm actually going to do a little five-minute diatribe. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I'm a realist. You know, when I look at businesses, I look at what's just the worst-case scenario. And so Brian knows this, he gets on my ass all the time about this, but the truth is you have to do what's best for you, period. And for me, my background is we did a lot of fix and flips. My father and I own our own brokerage. We've been successful since 2010. We've done over 150 million of our own account of fix and flips across Arizona. We merged into luxury home building and we were gracious enough for uh, Christy and Brian to call us up and want us to build their house. And that's how we got really acquainted and as friends. I've been after him since 2012, 13 probably. <laughs> and, and at that time, you know, maybe some of you were thinking, this is stupid. Like, this is a waste of time. That's what I thought. And, and the reason I thought that is the mom they vouched for us, yeah. right? And so the key to the game was, as the stock crept up, I wasn't a shareholder at that time, I didn't know anything about EXP. 
Um, but Brian and Christy started calling me and they said, we want to add an indoor basketball court. <laughs> we want a four season spa. I'm thinking, what the hell? This is gonna, this is this. Cold plunge. Yeah, this $2 million house is now morphing into a five or $6 million house. And I said, how bluntly, how are you gonna afford this? And he simply said, look at the stock. Yeah. And so once I saw that, I'm like, whoa, I'm, I'm the dumb person in the room. Because I, I, I thought, you know, I thought my little fiefdom of my single digit millionaire fosterhood. You know, I became a millionaire at 27. I don't mean that to brag. I mean it to say I was never given anything. I had a lot of opportunities, my parents, um, but it was hard work. It was buying rental properties. It was doing the hard work. But by the old metric, you had arrived. Correct. I had arrived in my own mind. Right. And then when you get in front of Tarek, Brian, Grant, um, all the people that we have access to, they're all touch point away. <laughs> and you see true wealth. And that's what Brian and I always talk about. 80 million is great, but let's get them to a billion. Yeah, let's go. You know, and, and that's kind of what, what we want. But when I look at making a decision, and if you guys have notepads, you know, I'm taking this from Brandon Dawson because it's exactly the way I associated this business choice. The first question you want to ask anyone, if you're a partner, RC, and this is blunt, what, Brian, what's the most amount of money you have ever made in a year? Mm. That's a loaded question, but what's the truth? Uh, if you count the stock and everything, everything uh, best year, 40 million. Okay. 40 million. The second question, this is for anything, right? Any business. I don't care if you're selling widgets, real estate, home builder. That's the first question you want to ask someone you're doing partner with, right? The second question you want to ask them is what is the biggest thing that you've been a part of or you created that helped other people for the better? And what would that be for you? EXP. EXP. And lastly, if you were to step off the Ferris wheel and go to, to E with Christy in five years yeah. and you were to exit, how much do you think your exit would be? Well, I think my exit will be when I will it to the family, but it, it's going to be a lot. It'll be billion plus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you look at those numbers and you say to yourself, well, that checks a lot of boxes. There's not a lot of people I know in my sphere. And John Michelle can contest to this. There's a lot of wealthy people in Arizona, but let's be honest, how many people in the world are with $80 million? A very, very small percentage. After you go through that, look at three P's. My P's are a little different than Allie's and Brandon's. Um, but my first was, but mine, mine, mine are three. So you take your four, I'm gonna do my three. So my three was the first was people. You know, I, I, I thought I arrived with my little fiefdom of a bunch of rental properties and me making all this residual income every month. And then I realized, what's your legacy? Yeah. Money means nothing if you're not impacting people and helping them succeed. I mean, we talk about this all the time, right, Lynette? Right, RC? Sure. How do we help people, right? That's, that's your true well-being, right? Yeah. That's the first thing, people. And do you like doing business with people? Yeah. I mean, you're cool. I like doing business with you. Brian's cool, Michael's cool, Christy's cool, all of you are cool. And those are the types of people I wanna do business with. The second one is purpose. When you get out of bed and you wake up in the morning, you go, oh shit, I gotta show another house, right? It's a bore. You gotta, you gotta, you can't trade time for money. It just doesn't work. And I learned that in my mid twenties. You have to get off the Ferris wheel and start realizing the only money you can make is residual, is passive, and going into something that's legacy wealth. Because being a single digit millionaire is nothing. You're still afraid. I wake up every day and look at all my accounts and go, oh shit, I'm a millionaire. Who cares? It's nothing. It could go away just like that. Yep. And, and, and that's what I realized. And the third is after people, after purpose, get up, have a legacy, have something you love to do. We love to talk to people, right? You love talking to people? Yes, I do. I do too. It's fun. And helping people. Yeah. Like how many people have called you and said, you helped me succeed? Um, quite a few. Yeah. And doesn't that feel good? It does. The best. Yeah. And then the last and not least, we're here for business profit. I mean, John, Michelle, how are you going to pay for all your Monaco trips? You got to make money, right? <laughs> it costs a lot of money to, to stay at uh, Hermitage and, you know. Il San Pietro and Poisitano and all these places. Uh, it's expensive. I want to stay there. Yeah. And you got to make profit. And what is, what does Brandon say, Ali, about business? You don't have a business unless you, you make money. money. Yeah. There is no business if you have no profit. And 
this stock, Brian, all of you guys are just assets to show EXP has been profitable, has been successful. And this is just the beginning. And once I checked all those boxes and answered the first three questions, it was a no brainer. And that's kind of my go to. Plus, brother, I think you have to give you that. <laughs> Plus, he's a hell of a basketball player. Yeah almost took me out the other day. So appreciate that, Michael. That's amazing stuff. I hope you guys are paying attention because that's a lot. There's a lot of gold. Yeah, I'm gonna ask you for the three P's after this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael, why don't you share your story, brother? Yeah, absolutely. So I haven't been to any of those places. Uh, <laughs> I hope to get there someday. So I, I went through uh, the school of hard knocks. That was my journey in real estate, and uh, through all of my professional experience and. So I, I didn't ever take the easy route. I didn't just listen to Brian the first time around and go, okay, yeah, like maybe you're onto something really special. I should take advantage. Everybody's biggest regret with the XP that I've ever talked to is, man, I wish I would have joined seven years ago. You know, but uh, Grant Cardone, uh, who just recently, his wife just joined EXP, said, you wouldn't have joined seven years ago. There's too much risk. There's too much risk in this model and you wouldn't have taken advantage of it. We still have agents that joined seven years ago that haven't brought one agent into the organization. You see what they lost out on, what opportunity costs that they lost out on. They've been here the entire time and they never took advantage of it. So guys, what is different now is there's no longer that same risk associated with this deal because we now have proof of concept where we can point to many people that have actually lived out this model. We have over 2,000 multimillionaires that EXP alone has created. 2,000 and we just hit 60,000. We're growing by 1,000 agents a week. So guys, it's no longer the risk. It's right now is the opportunity. And when I, I came from the venture capital world, and what I can tell you is that we would look at companies and every company was talking about the hockey stick. So right now they were flat, right? They were actually burning capital faster than they were making it with the hopes that they were gonna scale and be able to have a huge exit with an M&A or an IPO. And so when we looked at those companies that were burning cash, but they were talking about a hockey stick growth, we were trying to figure out if they're for real or not. Right now we're in the hockey stick. You can see with the stock, the stock. So you're saying those companies hockey. are hoping to have a hockey stick. They're hoping to have a hockey stick, and you're investing in them, hoping and praying that they don't go to zero. And a lot of them we're in mid hockey stick. And and we're in mid hockey. You're you're catching. Here's here's the hockey stick, and we're right here. There's still all this room for growth, and you can look at just KW's numbers and say, okay, so if they're at 180,000, we're at 60. We're not even a third of the way to where KW is, and we're we're expected to go three times bigger than that. So guys, if you see that opportunity, you, the, at the very least, you, you should buy the stock. But if you don't want to get involved with this, then I would, I would ask you why, you, you know, a lot of times, like the first time around for me with DXP, because I left and came back after the beginning of COVID. The first time around for me, I was, I, I wouldn't let my ego get out of my own way. And I wanted to do the traditional brokerage model within EXP. And I was too resistant to actually trying the technology to do the things that Brian was coaching us. Can I touch on that? Because this is such a key concept for, especially for the folks that are already with the XP. And, and it's such an important part. The, the beauty of a, a MEM model is you don't need personal bragging rights to become successful. You just need to know the success stories of the people who've gone before you. So for example, one of the questions Brandon always asks people, and this is a great question for you guys to ask people when you're talking about EXP. You say, Michael, has anybody ever sat down with you and seriously showed you how to create $250,000 a month in income? Has anybody ever done that with you? No. Okay. If I'm willing to do that for you, would you abandon everything you're doing right now and come work with me? Yes. Okay. So that's the kind of questions you want to start asking people. You don't just want to walk in a room and go, I'm a real estate agent. What do you do? You know, because like no one cares, right? I mean, ever, real estate, what do you do? You cut the grass on it? You, you like paint the fence on it? Like what do you, I mean, it's such a big world of real estate. You know, you got to really explain to people. And the beauty of it is you don't need to be personally successful. And that's where he just owned his own BS, by the way. He was so focused. And he, basically, it wasn't even your fault because you were so ingrained. We're so conditioned in this mark, in this, in, in the real estate industry. And certainly if you're a sales agent, buyers and sellers, you're so conditioned. To, I mean, like, here's the thing. I don't show up in Real Trends Magazine. Okay. Although I have a 3,000 person team. Okay. I got the, I got one of the biggest, I got the biggest team in Scottsdale. I'm not invited to the award dinners. I don't get written up in the magazines. Okay, uh, you know Jean-Michel gets written up for selling 60 million a year. 
I made 80 million and no one talks about it. Okay, so what would you rather do? Sell 60 million or make 80 million? Right, make 80 million all day long. But I don't show up in any magazines. I don't get invited to any award shows. No one knows my name in, in Arizona. But I'll, I'll trade that all in to keep this all day long. Okay, I'll make that decision every single day. And here's the thing. When I started growing EXP back when, it, when there was risk, guess what I didn't talk about? How broke I was. Okay, guess what else did I talk about? How broken I was. How, how, how my wife and I fought and my kids were, you know, uh, whatever. And, you know, I didn't sh share any of that. I didn't have a success story. I was broke and broke in. You know what I did have? I had Glenn's success story, but guess what? I didn't have his EXP success story. I had his Keller Williams success story. Can I jump in Please. There? So, so Brian, I mean, that's, that's the, the main point here is leverage. So he leveraged Glenn's story to get to where he is now today. Yeah. And so that's what I finally figured out this time around coming back to EXP was how can I leverage those around me to be able to attract agents into my yes. organization versus just relying on you guys are all good at that. Ago. You're good at that. You're good at that. S since the last four months, I brought agents in Northern California, Cal or Arizona, Colorado, I, I soon to be New Mexico, uh, Florida, Alabama, and New Jersey. And um, I did that in the last four and a half months. That's me personally. I've also helped Elena Cardone bring in 220 agents as of today. And we're in five different countries in 23 different yeah, states. Elena wasn't a real estate person and she wasn't an EXP person. Every single one of those 200 people, she had them talk to Mike. So that, that's, that's a massive growth, guys. And, and, and that was all leverage. It's, it's getting around influencers. It's getting around people that know those agents that are able to introduce you. And then when you learn the model, then you can go and explain that model. But until you do, like Brian said, you introduce. Some of the best guys that are making the most passive income, they're making that income because they're professional inviters. Professional inviters. So if you came here today and didn't bring, if you, first of all, if you invited some people, thank you for trying. If, if inviting and getting someone here. If you didn't get someone to come and you tried to invite, that's awesome. But if you just came and didn't invite anybody, you're completely missing the point of this. What Michael just described is you don't have to be a good pitch person. You don't have to have this razzle dazzle, uh, you know, the, the, you don't have to have whiteboard skills like I have. Right? <laughs> you just have to have, I'm an old, uh, an old philosophy uh, guy. But so you don't have to have, you know, be a good pitch person. You don't have to be a good salesperson. You just have to be a good inviter. But also, what were we talking about, Gabe? Now you're good. You're good at this. You could get up here and talk. But what about your agents? They need you to do this so that they can invite to come meet you. And it doesn't have to be a lunch and learn. It can be get them on a call. It can be get them on a Zoom call, right? I mean, Allie, how many Zoom calls are you doing with your group a week? Uh, I do one a week with my team, but I mean, I'll jump on if they. Three-way calls, Zoom three, calls, all yeah, of it, right? Four. four or five a week. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're, how many are you doing a week? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't get off the phone. If you look at my phone log, it's just call after so call. So put us to work for you. Yeah. You know, everybody up here is probably sponsors or, or represents the majority of the agents in this room. Uh, but go ahead, finish up. Because we're actually going to bounce yeah. in about two minutes. So okay, yeah, finish cool. Up. Yeah, yeah. Right. So so ultimately, guys, uh, what it comes down to is we're incentivized to help every single one of you guys grow because we're all owners in the company. And uh, you know, it took it was, the hardest thing for me was getting my mind wrapped around that because I really didn't like the attraction side of things because I was indoctrinated by my broker who told me that it was tacky to go recruit agents. That's was, a great story, though. It's a great story. It is, but for another time, right, another it really time. gave me three minutes. And that's but, uh, yeah, cool. <laughs> but so that was it. So hey, you're gonna go over to EXP because you, you want to attract agents. I thought recruit? you wanted to sell real estate. Yeah, exactly. You want to sell real estate? You want to attract agents. And it wasn't until later, because I'm never good at the comeback right off the bat, <laughs> that I was like, listen here, MFR. <laughs> like, that's what you do all day, every freaking day, dude. All you do is attract agents. Why is it okay for you to attract agents, for you to be able to have your real pyramid scheme where you're at the top of it, making all the money off of those splits? When I get a percentage of the split, all of a sudden that's a bad thing, that's tacky. Like, come on guys. So that was a huge aha wake up moment. I get an opportunity to get a feel like a broker owner and actually build my own brokerage up, not just in my state, like a lot of these guys who are limited to their own state, but throughout the entire United States in 17 different countries right now. That's powerful. So I'll, I'll kind of leave it at that, but that was, that was my biggest aha. You guys have any questions? Yeah, any questions for anybody? 
you guys have any questions at all? Well, there's sign-up sheets in the back, so let's get going. <laughs> what are you wasting more time? Let's start calling people. Let's what get going. What were the three P's again? The, the, the first P is, uh, hold on, you put me on the spot. People. Hold on, let me think about this. People. People. Second one is purpose. And the third one is profit. And the three questions, did you write those down? No. The three questions you want to ask anyone that you go into business with is this. A, what's the most amount of money you've ever made in one year? B, what's the biggest thing you started or helped start that's changed the lives of other people? What was B? What's the biggest thing that you've started or helped start that has changed the lives of other people? And then the third is... If you had to exit in two, three, four, five years, what do you think that would look at? That it would look like as a monetization sum. Thank you, Brian and Christy. Yeah, thank you, guys. Take care. We'll be back soon. Thank you, guys. We really appreciate you.